I've seen this going around. In this video, I'm going to show. I've seen this one going around a bunch. And I, I kind of want to check it out. It's got 100k views now. It is a guy talking shit about Nanite. That Unreal Engine, uh, I guess, rendering optimization that's supposed to make things so much better. This guy is claiming that it doesn't. It's 13 minutes long. Um, so I'm kind of curious about it. I don't know what, whether we're gonna have, what we're gonna be able to say about it, but I definitely want to check it out. That's for sure. So let's have a look at Epic's Unreal Optimization Disaster: Why Nanite Tanks Performance. In this video, I'm going to show you a six million poly mesh running significantly faster without Nanite, LODs, or any cooling software. Mm -hmm. Then. I'm going to show you how Epic game developers are discontinuing support for important traditional optimizations in Unreal's newest systems. We'll debunk commonly referenced tests that misled developers by replicating the test variables and showing the context that was not revealed to users. Finally, uh -huh. I'll present a visualization of how optimized scenery should be handled and the key balancing acts between detail and LOD transitions from an anti-aliasing perspective. Does this guy have like a, a background in game development or something? Like what, who, I, actually, I don't actually know who this guy is. Uh, official YouTube channel of the new indie game studio. Uh, he's got a couple of videos here. Hmm. Okay, okay. Well, let's, let's see where this goes. On August 16th, 2023, I created a thread on the Unreal developer forums comparing the performance with and without Nanite on high-density meshes. The first posts include third-party experiences where Nanite caused slower performance for users. For almost a year, myself and others have been... Am I doing something wrong? Why using Nanite, especially on landscape? I tried to activate it for tessellation, but not only you lose performance enabling Nanite on this, but you lose even more if tessellation is enabled. I don't, I don't get why you would push this as a big tech if it's making things worse. Like this, I, I, I'm confused. Like what the the reasoning behind this would be. Updating the thread with more tests showcasing the performance and visual drawback. I'm not a 3D modeler, but basically a pixel can only represent one triangle of a mesh and one pixel of a texture. So when you have tons of detail on mesh far away from the usual camera, you only sample two things and misses tons of triangles and pixels in between. Let's say real life was made triangles and texture. Real life camera would chroma sample light from afar and pack hundreds of triangles into one pixel representing that far away mountain. Okay. And it brings. Since its creation, the thread has had 27,000 views, and Google now references it when you search for Nanite performance compared to LOD. Okay. Uh, depending on what feature you use for your man uh, Nanite seed, it may be seen much slower than using automatic and or maybe one minute manual. Well, th this is my understanding as well. Like, Nanite, from what I understand, does increase performance, but in it it's not like a magic bullet. It doesn't fix every single problem. But is he trying to say that it's worse in every case? Now, what you're about to see debunks some of the most popular myths you'll frequently hear from users on the forums, the <laughs> UE subreddit, and test results provided by Unreal YouTubers. The first major lie was that enabling Nanite just made things faster. Mm -hmm. Thanks to our thread's widespread popularity, that notion is no longer as common as it was before, but has now been replaced with enabling Nanite only helps a mesh's performance if it has a certain amount of triangles. For example, sure. Nanite might be slower on a mesh with a thousand triangles, but faster on a mesh with 5,000 or 3 million triangles. Here's a test that directly disproves that claim. Okay. We extracted the scene with over 6 million triangles from an 8th generation game we recently analyzed on this channel and imported it into Unreal Engine with a similar camera perspective. The 6 million poly mesh scene ran 50% faster without Nanite. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. This was a rough extraction where the what I'm I'm confused why like what the the logic in pushing this would be then. Assuming these numbers are correct, right? Like that that's that's the core assumption. Assuming the numbers are correct, why would you want to push it if it makes things worse? Cuz that would become obvious very quickly. Camera angle was a little off. And not all the meshes from the original scene were included, causing mm -hmm. the scene to measure only one third of the frame's full geometric shading potential. If that didn't make too much sense, it will in just a couple of moments. Mm -hmm. But first, why was it faster without Nanite? 
the developers of 8th generation games prevented something called quad overdraw. Game objects are triangles, and every sure. pixel has a sample position. When the inside of a triangle ends up beneath a sample position, the GPU uses power to draw it on screen. But this right. is not done for every pixel. It's done for every 2x2 two two pixels called quads. Okay. This means even if just one of the four sample positions detects a triangle, the GPU will leak performance by wasting power on the entire quad. So let's mm -hmm. translate that new knowledge to what you're seeing here. This is the same test scene, but using Unreal Overdraw View Mode. This gives you the context for comparing Nanite to LODs. Mm -hmm. Everything dark blue means the quads or GPU computation in that area of the frame was fully utilized. Light blue means a quarter of the GPU power was wasted. Dark green means half the GPU's computation was wasted. And light green means 75% of the GPU power was wasted in that area because the triangle was too small. For every underutilized quad, the issue can recur on the same quad when another object needs to be represented right. on those empty pixels, becoming a recursive problem. For a complex... We love recursion. Recursion makes everything better. Recursion is recursion is definitely not going to ruin all of your fun, ruin all your life. No, 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 no. It's arguably photorealistic scene. The results here are impressive. Mm -hmm. Out of the geometry of the screen, it looks like about 45% of the GPU quads were fully utilized, 35% of the quads wasted a quarter <clears throat> performance, and 15% of the quads wasted 75% GPU performance. This efficiency is thanks to the use of LOD. The scene below only consists of a single 6 million triangled mesh, but it, uh, de it de derived, I think, de derived from hundreds of my LEDs drawn to a frame. When is that quad thing apply again? Is that part of Nanite? Uh, this is from the I the way I'm understand. Well, this is I think from my, the way I understand this is just like general GPU rendering. The first LOD or LOD zero can afford higher poly counts because overdraw is less problematic at a close digital distance. Mm -hmm. However, as you move away from objects, the triangles get smaller, hurting quad utilization and requiring LODs to merge the small triangles. Draw is less again? problematic. At the first LOD or LOD zero can afford higher poly counts because overdraw is okay, less so this problematic is just at a close Not doing any distance. LOD, However, as just you leaving the same model and going further away. Move away from and it gets less and less efficient to render. Objects, the triangles get smaller, hurting quad utilization and requiring mm -hmm. LODs to merge the small triangles. You can take things even further with better initial topology that organizes triangles to maximize surface area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is something the industry standard Simply Gone handles to a degree. But Unreal's overly praised auto LODs don't do. Balancing this would involve not allowing sharp polygonal transitions between triangles and adding density in between to appear more natural. Uh, what was that? Sharp polygonal transitions between triangles and. We should enhance ninth gen graphics by preventing sharp polygonal edges by adding roundness slash density in between these spots. Would most uh, mostly cause sixty percent. Uh, half overdraw and 40% quarter overdraw. It can end up costing way less than Nanai if the rest of geometry uses max area influence topology to keep overdraw cost at equilibrium. Okay. Adding density in between to appear more natural. So don't have hard edges, basically. Speaking of LODs and overdraw, our studio would like to highlight the significantly underrated correlation between temporal aliasing, such as pixel crawl and shimmer, with overdraw. This means mm -hmm. optimization in this area can have a major impact on the visual quality and motion by reducing the need for flawed TA. Without anti-aliasing, you can almost intuitively detect overdraw based on crawl and shimmer without a specific view mode like this. Mm -hmm. Earlier, I mentioned how we only measured one third of the frame's full geometric shading potential. This is because not all of our quads are shading geometry. For instance, each one of these meshes is 30,000 triangles, and mm -hmm. we have significant overdraw on most of the screen. Nanite is still 30,000 triangles, and we have significant overdraw. So all of that is overdraw. Yep. On most of the screen. Nanite is still slower. In fact, it's slower than the total millisecond timing we had for need for speed geometry timings for an entire city. But let's really test surface area shading cost by activating all the quad sample points by placing a cube behind these objects. Without Nanite, the cube adds a 28% to geometric timings. Mm -hmm. But with Nanite, it adds 41%. Not only... I'm still not really seeing why this would be pushed by Epic then. Not only is there a linear increase in surface area shading cost, but it also has a higher base Wait, time. did he just say linear? Hold on, I want to hear that again. 
but adds a 28% to GM extra timings. But with Nanite, it adds 41%. Not only is there a linear increase in... He did say linear. <laughs> why, why, why did he say linear? <laughs> Fine. We'll let him have that shading cost, but it also has a higher base time, making it cost 50 milliseconds versus just a measly 11 milliseconds. By the end of the day, both of these Lanier will be multiplied increase. by their material cost and the cost of their shadow methods, as they are not interchangeable. Virtual shadow maps are designed for nanite meshes. Mm -hmm. They are slower on traditional meshes and have casting issues at certain distances. Regular shadow maps can be very cheap if overdraw is contained, but they get overwhelmed by nanite's overdraw inducing detail. You can handle some pretty tough overdraw before starting to approach nanite, or really nanite and VSM level performance. Recently, it was AI generated. No, I think he just says things weirdly. Confirmed that UE 5.5 supports skeletal meshes for Nanite. First, you have Digital Foundry praising this feature, and then have a YouTuber share several misleading videos all over the Unreal community. He decided to grab some random skeletal meshes and enable Nanite on them, resulting uh -huh. in a jump from 15 to 50 FPS with Nanite enabled. First of all, he admitted. Right. Okay. I would assume that, the way I would say that at least, is it seems like it's going better. ...to having no LEDs enabled. He had virtual shadow maps enabled, which Epic already documented as being slower on non-nanite meshes, and he had no idea of what kind of extreme overdraw those skeletal meshes were inducing. Okay, so it was, at, it, it was comparing it against no optimization and running it with shadows that are known to be slower. This is similar to what's happening to with upscalers. You compare an overhyped upscaler like DLSS to a worst case scenario like the common TA. Suddenly you have a solution to a problem that never needed to exist. Out of the same Yeah, I'm not a, a the, the, the DLSS is always a always a always a, a fun one to talk about. It's like, hey, look at this this paint <clears throat> this paint on the road or this sign is slightly clearer. It's like, okay, sure. Common TA. Suddenly you have a solution to a problem that never needed to exist. Out of the several views he had, about 1% gave him issues about not including- I'm just curious, you don't mention whether the non version has LOD set up for skeletal meshes. If they do, the result is very impressive. If they don't, then I'm not sure it's a fair comparison. Including LODs. So we made another video comparing 200 different copies of a 450,000 triangle mesh, and then said he used Unreal's auto LOD algorithm to make four LODs per mesh. Again, <laughs> he was using virtual shadow maps, and Unreal's LOD algorithm is not going to help a 450 triangle mesh with only four LEDs. It is not going to relieve overdraw at that distance, especially on the epic scalability, which he mentioned in the video. So if his quad overdraw <laughs> looks like this, he's wasting 75% of the GPU power across hundreds and thousands of quads on the screen. So of course, when he enabled Nanite, he got a performance boost. Before Nanite- Right, so if you, test, <clears throat> if you test it against worst case scenario, you get a performance boost. Right, sure. Existed. Every unique mesh and every unique material on screen would cause a draw call on the mm -hmm. CPU. If draw calls get high enough, especially in complex scenes, they can cause serious performance problems. But draw calls don't exist for any mesh using Nanite. So you'll mm -hmm. see developers use this as an excuse for complex open world scenes, but developers already had a way to reduce draw calls before. I do believe LED meshes is about the worst thing a game could have. Of course, now it will be fast to use LEDs in instant message uh, meshes, please, and see how bad Nanite is for performance. Like merging unique meshes and their materials into one. Right, right. However, yeah, this is something before, I th this is something like I definitely do know about. Instead of having a bunch of random objects, you just make them one big object, it, it, and it saves a lot of uh, saves a lot of energy, saves a lot of time. Unique meshes and their materials into one. However, developers can't fully take advantage of this technique because merging meshes in Unreal means you merge the LED logic screwing up how the scene manages overdraw as you move between previously separated objects. Right. So you are forced to only merge objects close to each other instead of what you can predict will be loaded into memory together. A solution to this would be a system that combines these meshes you know will be loaded in memory together, their mm -hmm. LODs, and their distance swap information in a similar format to meshlets. A system with the sole purpose of reducing draw calls. Low Brody live? I am live. For a little bit longer. No data compression, no microcalling, or any of that. All mm -hmm. the hardware listed on screen supports mesh shading, which could likely benefit from a system like this. Mm -hmm. Another major draw call optimization for meshes is instancing. This is very important for single meshes that repeat a lot. 
such as street lamps, fences, foliage, walls, procedural environment designs, or just objects that tend to appear in large quantities. Each right, you, you don't just have a bunch of unique copies of it. Sure. Each instance can have its own coloring, position, and size. When a user on the Unreal Developer Forums pointed out that Lumen was problematic and incompatible with this traditional optimization to the main developers of Lumen, their response showed zero concern. They admitted to not working on support because they preferred inefficient Nanite rendering. If you want genuinely good comparisons between Nanite and non-Nanite mesh performance, we have good news to share with you. The mm -hmm. first post on the main Nanite thread I mentioned earlier has been totally revised to include fast links to every test and experience related to this issue. No need to waste time scrolling through the 142 posts with toxic and ignorant perspectives on this subject. It will be continually updated to include more Is it just a situation of not made here syndrome? Like, that that's the only logic I'm seeing here for why, if you have these numbers, why it would be still pushed. Provide the overdraw information, millisecond budgeting, and the shadow type. Of course, this is as long as Epic employees don't lock the thread. As we stated in our very first video, Nanite will not prevent a pop-free experience. And even then, well-made LEDs can prevent popping along with good dithering use. Unreal uses a noise pattern for dithering that triggers after a certain distance. The right. reason why you don't want transitions constantly tied to the camera's perspective is because dithering causes overdraw. Mm -hmm. And now, like I said before, we can handle plenty of overdraw now with the hardware that we have, but if all objects are switching at once, we would get a lot of overdraw surface area on screen. Another mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. with dither mm -hmm. fades is draw call doubling, which can also be mitigated with faster transitions. Unwell's transitions are too slow to be subtle. No Neptunia bro die fella. <laughs> and are too animated. <laughs> the stream's not even called Neptunia. Why are you expecting Neptunia here? <laughs> in comparison with order dithering methods. The Decima engine is probably the best implementation of LED fading, so it's something we'll want replicated in more titles. Hmm. We do not expect studios to spend hours of manual labor maximizing topology efficiency in million poly photogrammetry scans, or inspect models for optimum micro detail baking, or pay extra money for higher what was quality. That? What was that? That mic change. Labor maximizing topology efficiency in million poly photogrammetry scans, or inspect models for optimum micro detail baking, or pay <laughs> extra money for higher. <laughs> he must have said something wrong there, or like mispronounced a word. Quality LED services over a one-click free solution they know they can get away with, or a free flawed LED algorithm. The only. I see. Okay, that actually still does explain some of the value for Nanite then. It's easy. It's a one-click easy solution. Uh, yeah, I can do that. I was going to post it after we're done anyway. Here you go. Only solution that can balance the simple efficiency studios get with Nanite and the performance offered by Overdraw Contained Scenery mm -hmm. is an AI-trained solution for photogrammetry scanned AI. topology. Thanks to a recent video by Linus Tech Tips, they demystified AI as a program that is very good at recognizing and replicating patterns. Mm -hmm. What we need is a deep learning model that can analyze the original photogrammetry scans, including topology that follows the maximum area concept, mm -hmm. depth bias, and normal maps deriving from the original micro geo detail, and LODs that collapse subpixel detail based on overdraw. Mm -hmm. By continually feeding an AI the reference and the result goal, it will be able to produce overdraw-friendly results that run faster than Nanite and look better than most cheap LODs. We already have RTX Remix doing more complicated guessing work from an algorithmic perspective on textures with less information. But more than anything, it would have to be free so companies wouldn't object to the workflow. Sure, Imagine sure. the cost of paying 3D modelers to create hundreds of optimized variants for output reference. Not only would it be a lot of work hours to pay for, but it would replace the humans with the computer. It would also require high enough pay to keep the modelers motivated through extremely tedious work. It mm. would need a sponsor. And at first, you might think AI games over. Nana is the I'm an indie dev, please spare my wallet button. I guess that makes sense, right? Like, if, if you don't have the time to do all of this and you want a one click solution, it seems like right now it's the best one-click solution. But his argument is that it's not a great solution. And you can do this better through analyzing the models through a deep learning system and generating things based off of that. Someone not familiar with game data, this feels like a most... Well, if you're training it on your own data, right? Like, 
That may, I, I, don't, I don't care at that point. So oh, NVIDIA, as we just mentioned, RTX Remix. But NVIDIA's main selling point is the upscaling image quality king DLSS, which mm -hmm. becomes a much needed band-aid when overdraw is out of control, since it reduces the impact of bad overdraw by reducing the amount of surface area, the resolution. Mm -hmm. And the situation with DLSS is getting worse. DLSS isn't just a performance band-aid anymore. We now have whole new visual problems in basic areas of rendering that require the more expensive version, DLSS Ray Reconstruction, to fix manufactured problems. NVIDIA <laughs> is not ignorant. A <laughs> We fix the problems of the engines and then generate new problems based on the problems of fixing the problems. A couple of months ago. I remember a talk when, about Nano where apparently one of the things they did is create a custom triangle rasterizer. They outperformed the GPU standard rasterizer for small triangles. Maybe they figured out how to work around this quad efficiency thing for tiny triangles. Maybe. I, I'm only just learning about this issue now. Go. The main developer of TSR, Epic's in-house upscaler, mentioned that both AMD and Intel were very responsive in providing hardware optimizations for TSR through drivers and code, but NVIDIA was the slowest. I'll let you speculate why. But imagine, if AMD and Intel really wanted to dent NVIDIA's market value, it's not by competing in upscaling image quality, which AMD is very talentless in, it's by making upscalers as a whole less valuable and needed on modern hardware by sponsoring the development of quick and efficient optimization tools. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something valuable. Please give us a like and subscription and comment hmm. your support, questions, or feedback to keep the YouTube algorithm on our side. Share our videos on any popular Discord server with a videos channel or any game related subreddit since those two platforms prevent self promotion but really help us reach more views. Well, that's it for today. If you haven't, please watch this video as it's hands down the most important video on the internet regarding the manufactured visual problems and fake optimization in modern games. Until then, Thank you very much for your continued support. Huh. I... The, the way that I'm saying... Assuming what he's saying is correct. My assumption for why Unreal would be pushing this and why Unit, uh, why um, why Epic would be pushing this is the Nanite solution is considerably easier than doing a full deep learning model. Like deep, big deep learning models are very expensive, very computationally GPU expensive. Hmm. As an Asian indie dev, making a boing boing game will prove P equals NP with PP hard problem. <laughs> uh, just surrender more boings at a time and no one will ever know. Probably already happened. We like we like PP hard problems. Um, I don't know enough about this this area to really comment on it. I I think he, it, at least from what what he, it seems like he's saying, it seems like the man is cooking. It certainly seems like he's cooking, and I guess we'll have to wait and see what else comes out of this, and... Oh, actually, he has a pinned comment. Uh, response, uh, response to community questions. Re we've repeatedly seen comments attempt to explain how Nanite works, arguing that quad overdraw isn't relevant when we compare... The overdraw of view mode to Nanite, it's your cue to understand we're measuring traditional non-Nanite rendering against Nanite. Additionally, many have claimed that Nanite has a large but flat consistent cost. This is utterly false. Nanite can and does suffer from its own form of overdraw, though not quad related. A major issue that people are missing involves virtual shadow maps, which are tied to Nanite. Nanite's shadow method not only re-renders your digital scenes at massive resolutions, but these maps are also redrawn under basic scenarios are typical in games, such as moving the camera's position, shifting the sun and moon, or moving, uh, or having moving objects or characters spread across your scene. I guess so. Just literally things happening in a video game. Um, even Epic Games admitted VSMs were terrible for Fortnite, uh, but instead, uh, but instead accepting wasn't fundamentally a good fit. They bit the bullet and use it anyway but they didn't really buy anything. Consumers did. To those defending Nanite because it saves on development time. Yeah, this is my, this is like where I'm seeing the value in it, even if it is bad. Um, we have consistently stated this in previous videos and also said this is a great thing to work towards. Right, okay. 
So, what they would want is a better... Sl uh, what are these even if people fail to grasp that now is a forced alternative? Right, if, they, if they're moving away from other rendering solutions. Right, that makes sense. Due to workflow inefficiency and legitimate optimi uh, optimization for meshes. Like we stated in our fake optimization video, pro nanite users fail to recognize the contradiction nanite causes in visual fidelity. If you're using a technology that has such a massive domino effect on performance, they end up having to use a blurry, detail-crushing temporal upscaler to fix performance, then you're smearing all the detail anyway for a distorted uh, presentation. So you're not really getting a benefit in looks in the first place. Then you were to explore cheap, deferred MSAA options, all that sub pixel detail possible in Nano and VSM's gross use of soft shadow sampling is prompting temporal aliasing slash Reliance on flawed TA uh, SS. The test shown in 336 shows a workflow deficiency rather than an, an implementation one. Unreal does support per instance LOD selection, but the engine defaults to ISM, uh, instance state uh, static meshes, which don't support LOD. But UE5's hierarchical instance static meshes does, but the developers have not made this as accessible and have not produced a system that combines all these meshes with pre-computed asset separation culling. Before some people complain about duplicated assets and increased file size, we encourage viewers to research how Spider-Man PS4's open worlds were managed. Hmm. Again, I am not a game developer. I'm not I'm not a maths guy, I am not a rendering guy. But it sounds like he's cooking. Uh, Brody, I made my website finally be a, the bare minimum of a halfway. <laughs> yeah, I need, a, I need to remake a website at some point. So, um, I, I, I chucked the link in chat. Check that out. This is a video from, uh, Threat Interactive. They only have 10k subs, so... Yeah, go have a look at, at some of his other videos, I guess. There's, like, four on the channel. <laughs> I think I can conclude from all this the computer graphics are hard. Yes. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, Moore's law implies that the amount of boing boing that can be rendered will double every two years. <laughs> As it should!